Let's take a look at what's called an arithmetic sequence. It's essentially a pattern where the numbers are evenly spaced. You'll notice here that this sequence is decreasing by three. We call that a common difference of negative three or D equals negative three. A series by contrast is the adding of numbers that typically form a pattern. You'll notice that these terms are increasing by two or D equals two, another way to say that. The letter A plays an interesting role in this topic because an A with a subscript just represents term. I don't know why they didn't choose the letter T for term, but A1 means term one, term two, term three, two, term four, and so on. Here, these are the first four terms, obviously. It turns out 100 is the 46th term if you were to actually count it out, but that's what the A means. Here's a sequence as an example. This is the formula that will guide us on arithmetic sequences. Suppose we wanted to know the 10th term of the sequence. First of all, one way to do it would just be to write out to the 10th term, and that wouldn't be very much formal math, but we could use formal math to do it as well. A1 refers to the first term, which in this problem is seven. D refers to the common difference. You'll notice by looking at the sequence, the terms are going up by four or D equals four. Plugging in for N, the term that we want, if we want the 10th term, put a 10 where N is and do the math. We know the A1 and D from this, just by looking at the sequence. And if you do all the PEMDAS, you'll find out that the 10th term is 43. By the way, it shouldn't be surprising if we actually wrote it out. The 10th term would be 43. So you could have avoided some algebra there if you'd wanted to. Something called the general term, also known as the nth term, is a formula that will allow us to find any term. So in this case, we wouldn't replace n with anything if we were being asked for the general term. n would just stay as n. Plugging in once again a1 and d, which we know by looking at the sequence, and doing some basic algebra, you have a formula for what's called the general term or the nth term. What does it mean? It means it's a formula you could find any term with. Suppose we wanted the 10th term. We could plug in 10, work out the math, and find out the 10th term is 43, which, by the way, we found out earlier. When terms are added together, we call it a series. If you want to find the sum of all these numbers, you can use this formula. It's also written this way in some circumstances. So if we wanted to add up all the numbers in this pattern, here's what we could do. Notice the first term and the last term are known. You could plug those in. N represents the number of terms. Well, how many terms are there in this sequence? I guess we'd have to count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Well, we don't really know. There's too many unwritten terms here. So counting them may not be the best option, but you could, you could count, you could certainly count them if you wanted to. Short of having to count them, we could pretend this is a sequence and use the general term formula. Knowing A1 and D, we could then simplify and plug in the last term or 89 for the nth term. This would allow us to find what N is using some middle school basic solving techniques, we'll find out that n is 28, and that therefore that the last term is the 28th term in this sequence, and we can therefore plug in 28 for n. By the way, if this algebra eludes you or seems weird, just count. It'll work just as well as long as the numbers aren't too big. Now just do some basic PEMDAS, and you know what all these numbers add up to. By the way, if you actually added up all these numbers, you would indeed get 1,358. Thank you for watching.